Howdy, howdy, howdy. I'm back. Um, this is Ms. Dunn here, and we're learning how to do plot diagrams. So, um, previously I had you do character creation based on a character that already exists. So, you guessed it. We're going to do plot diagrams based on a movie that already exists. So, the example that I generally use all the time is Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo gets a little complicated because there's actually two storylines going on at the same time but um, I'm going to focus on Marlin's storyline just to simplify things. So hopefully you've seen Finding Nemo and you know what I'm talking about. If not, pretend that you've seen Finding Nemo I guess. So we learned previously that there's five major important points to a plot diagram and that's exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. We also talked about conflict. So what we're going to do is you're going to choose a film that you love and that you know, and maybe if you want to, you can even watch it again to fill this out. And you're going to identify the certain plot points that help develop the film. So um, just like the character sheet, you can just double click on these here. And we're gonna start with exposition because that is the beginning, that is where we begin. So. Um, I'm using Finding Nemo, so the place is, and like I said, we're going to stick to Marlin's story, so I'm going to say the place is the ocean in the beginning. And the time, it's modern day, I'm going to say modern, current time, and that's just, um, even though it came out in like 2003, it, it's still modern, it's not like ancient, it's not like the 50s, it's modern-ish. So characters, we have our main character here. And yes, we have Nemo as well, but I'm actually going to focus on Marlin. Is that how I spell his name? I'm just gonna put that in there. And Dory as our secondary character. It's really important to establish the mood throughout the plot line because we wanna see how things are changing and how things have been developed. So the mood in the beginning is the very, very beginning. It's kind of sad, right? Because Marlin's wife dies. So um, I can say sad in flashback because we have a flashback at the beginning. And then we have a flash forward to current time. And then I'm going to say it's pretty, it's chipper, it's happy, modern. Because, um, you know, he's really protective of Nemo and he's prepping him for school and he's like trying to get him going. He's like, come on, dad, I can do it, right? So he gets him to go to school. And it's pretty peppy. Point of view. So this story is being told... I mean, we're viewing it from an outside source, so it's third person. Okay. So as we start trailing up the rising action, something happens that changes everything for us to go on our adventure with these characters. So in the story of Finding Nemo, the big thing that happens is that little Nemo swims up to touch the butt, right? So Nemo touches the butt, which is actually a boat. And he is captured by this dentist. And um, they take him back to his dentist's office to put him in his aquarium, right? He's fish now. So the conflict here is, I would say, Nemo is fish napped. Makes that a little bit smaller so it fits inside. Type of conflict. This gets a little bit complex. Um, so we have our four types of conflict, right? Man versus man, man versus nature, man versus society, and man versus self. This story gets a little complex because Marlin begins to become a little, it's a little bit man versus self because he has to get over his over obsessiveness and protection for his son. Although um, things have happened in Nemo, but it happened regardless of him being overprotective or not. So type of conflict, the other type of conflict, and we talked about this in class actually, and it kind of made me laugh is, Man versus nature. And I started thinking about it, I'm like, it's actually nature versus man, because we have the fish fighting against the dentist for the most part. And of course, every little plot point in between has a different little conflict. But this overall one, I'm going to say is man versus man. Because Marlon has to overcome his own difficulties to find his son. Okay. So now we're going to go up to the rising action. So the rising action can actually have a lot of different plot points. So our protagonist, protagonist means basically the main character of the story. 
Generally, it's a good guy, but sometimes it can be twisted. So in this situation, our protagonist is Marlin. Gosh, I cannot, I can't remember if it's spelled like an actual Marlin or if it's spelled Marlon. I'm going to keep it the same. I'm going to say it's spelled Marlin. So Marlin, our antagonist um, overall is the dentist. He's the one that captured Nemo and they need to get him from there. Okay. And the mood here is fearful. He's fearful that he's never going to get Nemo back ever again. So something I want to point out here. So the rising action. This is where all of your tensity is rising up to the climax. So we have events keeping you on the edge of your seat, keeping you reading or watching, keeping you involved. So if we think about finding Nemo, we go back. Um, so Nemo is fishnapped. That's what happens. So one of the very first things is Marlon, of course, goes looking for Nemo and he finds Dory. And Dory and him start to develop a relationship. And they're on their way to go find Nemo. And they're, find, they're following certain clues and word of mouth. And they end up finding the sharks, right? I believe it's Bruce the shark. Fish are friends, not food. So they sit through their little meeting about not eating fish. But then blood is in the water. And the sharks are on the hunt. So that's one of our rising action plot points. After that, I believe they escape. And they end up going into the jellyfish field, right? And Dory is going through the jellyfish really quickly and she eventually gets stung. And so Marlon has to go chase her and find her. And they end up in the depths of the dark ocean, right? So the jellyfish is the second plot point. I, I'm sure there might be some more in between, but that's the second big one. And they end up in the really dark depths of the ocean. And they end up running into the lantern fish. And they deal with those scary things down there. There's another plot point. They eventually escape all of that, and I believe they run into the turtles next, right? And so now they're riding El Nino with the turtles and the little squirt, and they're taking that to go get to um, 42 P. Sherman Avenue or whatever it's called, right? So they take they ride with the turtles. They end up catching a ride with the whales. They run into the seagulls, and... Um, all of these points are building up, keeping us on the edge of our seat, hoping that Marlon finds his son Nemo, and we're staying with him every step of the way, and it's building up, it's building up, and all this tension's building, all the suspense is rising, and we get to the climax, where Nemo escapes his his aquarium, Marlon is in the same area as Nemo, and then with Dory, and Dory gets upset and runs away, and they all get swept up in a fishing net. This is the climax of our story, because this is where everything is meeting this is where everything is emerging this is where everything's so exciting so i'm going to right here um nemo dory and uh, marlin are caught in a fishing net okay so this is where everything's it's just it's outrageous this is the most emotional most important part of the story is where they all meet they're still in great peril however the conflict outcome right is um they escape net they escape the net and marlin and nemo meet up once again resulting events marlin and nemo reunite mood it is it's relieving it's it's settling i'm, I'm gonna say relief and then we come down to the final outcome. Dory ends up making, they make amends with Dory, right? So Dory stays. And Nemo goes to school. And Marlin is less uh, controlling, I guess, is what I would say. The theme. The theme is the meaning of the story, the overall message of the story. And there's so many we could pull out of the story of Finding Nemo. But I'm going to say, um, I'm going to use the phrase, like, if you love it, let it go. Because he had, he has to let Nemo become an adult clownfish. He has to let Nemo make his own way. And if he loves him, he has to let him go. Just a little bit. The author's purpose, the purpose of the movie, there's lots of things we can say here. We can say that it's to entertain, to persuade, to teach a lesson. 
I'm going to say it's to entertain because it was exciting. It was fun. And I'm going to say it was to teach a lesson, too. Because, you know, we learned a lot of lessons from the film Finding Nemo. And the mood at the very end is happy again. So here is a simple plot diagram. I know the rising action, I would love it if I can get every single plot point in there, but I feel like if you just overall identify the protagonist and the antagonist, we can head in the right direction. When you get into plot plotting your own story, I definitely want to see some of those intricacies in there. So as always, any questions, any concerns, any confusion, please email me. You can always ask me and I will set aside time to help you out. And other than that, make sure to refer back to this video to help you along with your assignment. And you're on your own. So have a good one.